This is really what we're planning to try to do for the future, uh, for next year. And I'm going to try and give you, trying to get a bit of a feel from you as to whether this is of interest to you. Uh, there'll be two things. The first one here is how do we do useful local studies? Now, I'm actually not going to tell you how to do your studies. You know that very well for yourselves. The second part is I'm actually going to tell you about innovation and, come and basically you know, challenge you to something, a new concept for a group like this. Now, every centre is good at doing their own thing. We, we sort of prefer, we, we're actually quite pleased that we've got a real ability at doing RSE technology. This is where you use your tantalum beads, place them in the bone, and I don't know if you can see it here, but you see the green lines sitting up here. This is where all the, this actual, the movement, this is actually inducible micromotion undertaken in a patient with a wrist plate when they're actually clenching their fist. Now, what use is that? Well, the answer is you could be using this to try to tune implants to work for different types of bone qualities. So this is what we do. This is what we like doing, and we'll keep on doing this. So we're not trying to change this. And in fact, we actually can see when bones heal, so we can now answer that question, when does union happen? We can also answer things like, you know, how much load is actually happening, how much movement is happening for a given, for an actual given loading of a joint. And of course, then we move into other interesting things, such as newer implants. Could we get things which are genuinely friendly for osteoporotic bone, a bit more rigid for younger bone. Uh, it's really quite exciting, you know, the actual possibilities and combining this with a number of different disciplines, not just clinical assessment, but thinking of it. What I really want to speak to you about are a number of small projects. These are things which, just some of the ones we've been doing, things we need help with, okay? I think we're a cohesive enough, a cohesive enough group now to actually ask you, can you help? Now, I don't just want you to help me with my projects, I want to help with your projects. I want us all to cross talk if we're up to it. So my plan would be, in a, you know, basically this time next year, having two, maybe three presentations of people who are saying, this is what we do. It's not mainstream, it's a bit different, it's a bit quirky, but it works, or we think it does. It just tries to make some new inroads, find something new, uh, just be creative, okay? I'll use creative just now, innovative comes later, okay? I'll take just some of these through, uh, well, go through them. Basically, this is, we were talking about wrist fractures and assessment. How many shockingly bad lateral x-rays do you see of wrists and you're trying to judge the, judge, judge the reduction or you have metal work in the way and you can't see what's going on? The answer is plenty. Uh, so we basically hit across, we came across this idea that if you actually look at the lunate and you actually look at the shaft of the radius, there is actually a common, a common feature. That is, the radius is actually essentially cylindrical in this part. And if you think of, the, think of the, the lunate, it's actually hemispherical. And we sort of thought, right, this is possible. Could it be that any form of translation or dorsal angulation takes the lunate above a line which is actually drawn through the flare of the metaphysis? And this actually seems to be the case. In fact, better still, it actually takes both these into consideration. And what's more, this is, an, this is obviously these x-rays were chosen specifically, but you can see that when it comes to actual measurements of volar tilt, totally different figures compared to the measurement of displacement, perfect to, to 0 0.01 of a millimetre. But anyway, so this is something we looked at, and we've looked at scans, pretty appalling looking scan, this one. But this is actually maintained up to 30 degrees of rotation and so pronation, supination. We just have so many of these cases to go through, so many iterations of this, but it would save a lot on re-x-rays, frustration at fracture clinics, uh, and saying, yes, that's good enough. Just a very simple check to make sure this fracture is reduced. Now, this is something really simple, change practice quite simply, a good pot boiler project for, for centres. Very, very cheap, and it's very much for, say, registrars to actually put together the information. So just a simple idea, okay? You have plenty of your own. Right, this one is a, this actually came, the next one's actually come on the back of a study, it was, not, it was actually an RCT, an international RCT which I organised and presented at the OTA and then also parts of it at the American Academy. And I was looking at suprapatellar nailing and infrapatellar nailing. Now anybody who knows me knows I absolutely detest outcome scores. They are lousy. And unfortunately so much of what we're presenting and giving our results on are based on inappropriate outcome scores, which is very difficult to make any sense at times. So basically, we came up with this absolutely heck idea, two sets of scales, kneeling on two sets of scales, blinded, uh, so that the patients couldn't see what was going on, and we kept them there for 60 seconds. And this is for looking for anterior knee discomfort. I can't see pain, the symptoms, but it's discomfort. And amazingly enough, four months, you could differentiate the two groups, six months and a year. No problem. 
Only at about a year could we get any of the clinical outcome scores to begin to actually become statistically significant. Others weren't, just one of them was. And that was a problem. It needed big numbers, but this helped us to get an answer much quicker. We found that these same patients, even standing on the scales, if you'd had an infrapatellar approach, your knee was sore. You still didn't stand equally until you were at 12 months. Whereas the infrapatellar approach, you were better. Now, we've actually incorporated this really simple test into anything to do with ankles, uh, to do anything with lower limb. We're actually trying to do this, obviously, kneeling great, anti your knee discomfort. But again, something we'd like others to come and help us try it out. Can we get this to work? OK, it'd be a great thing if we could get your help with this one. OK, innovation. This is where I tell we'll shut the doors. I do quite literally mean this. I love inventing things. I've sent something around. I, I can tell you it's, it's a labor of love. It's so hard to get anything out there and made, but it's so nice, the challenge of just trying to resolve a problem. How would you feel, or how, who here has invented things? Tim. And I mean, invented as a novel, invent, great, we've got plenty of folk. Have you had any success at getting them out there? Or has, com has a company approached you and said, make something for us? Or have you genuinely come up with a brand new idea yourself and tried to get it out there? Ian, you've actually come up with that, yeah. Good. We're, we're in the position that we can actually start, and I've been through this before, we could actually close the doors, get anybody, everybody in this room to sign a non-disclosure agreement that they will keep hush-hush about what's going on. It's good I can give you the guidelines as to any presenter who wish to come along and try out their ideas on us and see if it's a good idea or not. Uh, and, and we could actually set this up. We'll have a, you know, an investment person here. We'll have a, not, a patent attorney, if you wish. I'll get somebody down here, as well as others who are obviously experienced in actually getting ideas out there. And it's a nice thing. Here's just, uh, just some of the things I've been doing uh, over the years. I'll take you through some of them. The people who probably know me for best for doing pH monitoring for looking at acute compartment syndrome, but other things. That, thankfully, is about to happen. I got the funding for that, and it took one hell of a time, but it looks like probably in about a year we'll start the clinical trials for that, uh, which is long overdue. And it's, it works, of which orthopedic uses are only about 10% of what it can do. It would help with all sort of blood loss issues as well. But here's a jig that just shows you. This is a jig for I am nail distal locking. This works better, it's faster, it's cheaper, and it's sterilizable for doing distal locking. You can make a variant for 3D locking. You don't need to see the holes. And I can't get this to go. You know why? It's the timing to do with the multinationals. But they are now showing interest again, I'm pleased to say. But actually, it's something very simple to do with just aligning the lines in the jig, which I can probably, you probably see, and the lines, or the line, or using the outer border of the nail as the marker. And in fact, with the actual, the actual version we use in clinical practice, you can take deviations as much as distortions, as much to 20, well, that's 20 degrees, actually, off in any plane and still get this to work. So it's a, just what, here's a concept, and this was us using it to do an ailing uh, on a patient. This is the thing I've passed round just now. Some of you have had it, uh, had this, actually looked at it. This is probably very self-explanatory. It's a candidacy reduction forceps or a guide wire, or you can put ligament devices. You could use it as a guide for ACLs. You could do corticochromoclavicular ligament reconstruction. You could do what you like. There's so many variations of this and iterations. Would you use it? <laughs> right. If I can tell you that that information to any budding inventor is phenomenal. We, in this room, I could say, two, well, you know, we could obviously show hands and say, right, 40% 40, 40 roughly of this group would use this if it was available. And what's more, we've got five groups who'd be willing to try it out tomorrow when it's actually produced. Do you know how much that is like gold to somebody who wishes to try to get something out there and innovate just because it's what interests them? OK, I can't tell you of the importance of this. Here's another one which has gone absolutely nowhere so far. That said, it is actually now going somewhere. But this is a concept I had thinking along. I hate K-wires, as people will know of wrists. But here I have actually gone and put in, effectively, a big threaded, th thick K-wire. It's called a cancellous screw. Now, the difference with this is it's being used as a strut. It's gripping here and it's gripping here. It's put in very similar fashion as you put in a K-wire. Of course, a bit fiddlier trying to put screws in. And that's why I came up with a system whereby we're looking at new screw designs, 
new jigs, all sorts of things to put these things in. And done all the sort of FE work, finite element analysis work in this. This works well. And actually other modeling as well. And this is now beginning to go somewhere. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, crumbs, I can't come present stuff that hasn't been worked up like this. Their diagrams are rubbish. Remember that every idea starts off on a scrap of paper, OK? It's not a problem to come up with a scrap of paper and, and give us a concept. What I would say to you, though, is that I'm very happy to take ideas from you for local projects, for innovations. Uh, I'm happy to sign non-disclosure agreements between anybody who wants to discuss them with me, and I'll give you advice as to whether it's appropriate or not as to whether this forum's any use. But this could be quite useful to you. We have, you know, so any person who's in this room would sign the dotted line that, they're, that this is, you know, they're being exposed to this idea. And they would have, admittedly, 30 days to prove that they had come up with the same concept with paper evidence, should they contest it and say, this is my idea. Uh, you know, should anyone else in the audience say that? But do either of these concepts, or hopefully both of them, interest you? Okay? Would there be people who would like to come and say, we've got an idea, we do something wacky with screws up fibulas? Now, I know Mike Kelly does that. Would people like to do screws across tibias to help non-unions? We know that happens. You know, we've got Bob does this sort of stuff as well. There's loads of ideas. We're creative. We're gadget free. We're gra gadgety sort of people, aren't we? Uh, but then we go to the next stage, and that is making something new to resolve problems. And that is also a really exciting one. Uh, and if I get your, I've left my, I haven't actually shown you it yet, but I will. That's my email address. Uh, and. Just explain you know, who you are, who you are what, roughly what you want to do. Don't give me the details if it's something innovative, as in truly with intellectual property. Just be fairly vague about it uh, initially until we actually get something in place. Uh, then I can happily talk to you about it and discuss it, something for this forum perhaps to discuss, okay? Uh, I will know that I'll be about, please corner me and, well, don't bash me up, but you know, corner me and let me know if this is good for you. Finally, we're about to go for tea, coffee. Can we make it about a 10 minute break? Uh, before we go, have I got any questions people would like to ask of me just now? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yep. I think what I'm trying to do is say, but I'm trying, we're trying to do it for interest, let's be upfront, and, and to stimulate discussion. Uh, so much of what we do is fine tuning research. Let's be, let's be, let's take the next step. Let's be creative. Let's take it on the next stage. So I'm just trying to just change, ring the changes for a few years and just see what comes of it and see uh, if it's, if it's good fun. Okay. You'll speak to me later. Right. Thanks. <laughs>